Extinction features a premise which sounds incredibly exciting on paper. An action-focused title with agile movement, fast combat, giant monsters and hordes of enemies. Unfortunately, the actual execution doesn't quite live up to the grand premise. You play as Aveal, one of the last few remaining Sentinels, an ancient order tasked with protecting humanity from the Reveni, also known as Giant Ergers. Aveal is capable of scaling buildings at speed, gliding through the sky, grappling, juggling and chaining enemies together in combos, all in quick and often satisfying succession. Extinction at its core is a combat focused game. Thankfully it is actually capable of providing some pretty enjoyable moments in that area. The combat's fairly straightforward. Mash the attack button in different successions to form combos, hold the attack button to hit an enemy into the air where they can be juggled, and later on, once upgraded, use dodge attacks to create further combos. It's not extensive by a long stretch, but it can be satisfying when combined with the game's movement. The movement is both Extinction's strong point and a huge cause of frustration throughout the game's 10 or so hour long campaign. While it works well when used out in the open environment, it can become excruciatingly frustrating when paired against the giant ogres. These towering beasts spawn into the level in waves and slowly head towards the towns, destroying everything in their path. It's your job to dispatch them before they're able to do too much damage. By holding the left trigger, you can slow down time and aim your character towards a weak point on the Ergers. Let go of that trigger and a lunge swipe attack is initiated. Chopping off their legs causes them to fall to the floor and makes mounting much easier. Chop off their arms and they're incapable of attacking. They lose the weapons in the process. Limbs do grow back after a short period of time however, so the ogres are only vulnerable temporarily. Do enough chopping and you'll build up your kill meter and be able to initiate the final blow on an ogre's neck. Basically, mount the beast, reach the neck, hold the left trigger, aim towards the highlighted weak point and you'll kill him. The game's complexity actually comes from adding armour to the ogres. Early on in the game, wooden armour forces you to take an extra blow in order to create a vulnerable spot. For example, you destroy the leg armour first and then you can chop off the leg. Every few levels the developers introduce a new form of armour, such as bone armour which forces you to wait for the fire in the skull's eyes to extinguish before the armour is vulnerable, to padlocks on the armour pieces which you need to destroy first, and even spiked armour which causes you to take damage when you come in contact with it. The armour feels less like an exciting gameplay mechanic and more like an excuse to add artificial difficulty to the game. As the game progresses, the basic mechanic of dispatching the ogres remains exactly the same. The weak spots stay the same, purely protected by different forms of armour. A padlock which requires two hits was too simple, how about four padlocks on a single piece of armour? Or even, how about a form of armour that's literally indestructible? Mechanically the game feels identical throughout, making things feel like a real slog. The ogre's armour rarely feels interesting, and instead feels purely designed to make the same task take longer. In the early game, dispatching these huge beasts can make you feel like a powerful yet nimble assassin, but unfortunately it quickly ends up feeling more like a monotonous and frustrating slog against repetitive difficulty gates. To add to the feeling of repetition, the game's environments are completely devoid of any character and variety. A handful of repeated locales with alternate layouts feature throughout. Mission objectives regularly repeat too, with the game even going as far as randomly generating both the side objectives and the choice of environment on the actual core campaign missions. Defend the towers for 7 minutes, kill 4 of any, save 25 civilians. Whilst these uninspiring objectives may sound like side quest filler, they actually take up a significant portion of the campaign's core objectives. Smaller enemies generally just exist to provide a nuisance rather than any real challenge. These enemies spawn near the game's civilians as you approach them, attacking them as they just stand still and just take it. After a few hours I even decided to skip fighting them altogether wherever possible and simply save the civilians as fast as I could, ignoring the enemies. The skill system is also lacklustre. Outside of a couple of abilities such as the ability to attack from a dodge, they add little to the overall experience. Jump higher, increase your health, rescue civilians faster. They're mostly just dull, percentile kind of boosts. There's no major abilities to unlock or any real weapon variation. The result is that the first 15 minutes offer almost identical gameplay to what takes place a few hours later. A lack of refinement throughout the game can result in some frustrating moments too. 
padlocks clip inside the ogres as they swing their arms, resulting in missed armour attacks. Scaling the ogres is nowhere near as smooth as it should be, either, particularly when an ogre's on the move. A veal often slips off, gets stuck on random spots, or just doesn't react how you'd expect. Whilst the death penalty is only really a loss of time, these one-hit ogre deaths can still prove irritating, especially when they occur fairly often due to unpolished mechanics rather than player skill. Unfortunately, the story and characters are also very weak in Extinction. Whilst the nonsensical dialogue aims to offer context to the battles you're taking place in, the game never itself leans into these stories or characters in any real capacity either, be it mechanically or in the world. An expedition of my most valuable men has left to retrieve the material Xandra requires for her weapon. That is heartening news. NPCs simply stand and cheer next to a glowing stone whilst you hold a single button to save them. A series of static voice lines at the beginning and end of every mission struggle to create any kind of real attachment or interest to the world's events or characters. That said, between each chapter there are some genuinely well animated cutscenes which offer the only glimpse we get at something interesting in the story. These cutscenes look great, the game's voice acting is actually fairly solid considering as well. Unfortunately though, they never amount to anything more substantial. Visually, the game is a mixed bag. The stylized design works well, but the bland, repetitive environments just don't look that great. The game also runs at what appears to be a sub 1080p resolution on the Xbox One, which is where we tested the game, resulting in a slightly blurry image quality overall. And the game offers no support for the Xbox One X or PS4 Pro consoles. Extinction frustratingly does actually feature some great moments. When everything goes right and you dispatch an ogre swiftly, gliding away as he topples to the ground, there's a real sense of satisfaction. Movement works well on the ground and around the buildings, allowing you to get some genuine speed and height as you bounce from the canopies, glide through the sky, and grapple swiftly towards flying enemies and tree branches. There is fun to be had here, there's no doubt about that. However, it feels like Iron Galaxy have created an exciting initial premise and then struggled to build the rest of the game around it. The campaign often ends up feeling like randomly generated missions, and in some cases genuinely is randomly generated, as opposed to something that's been handcrafted. Rather than making you feel increasingly more powerful throughout, the different tiers of ergo armor simply serve just to slow you down. The lack of character makes it impossible to feel any real attachment to the world you're fighting in, and the extreme lack of variety results in a strong sense of fatigue. Extinction feels like a missed opportunity. The game could have been great, and often shows glimpses of something better. Alas, what we have in the final game feels like the quarter of a complete package. The price tag attached to the title, however, begs to differ. At £55 or $60, Extinction's competing with the big boys here. Disappointingly though, it isn't able to stand amongst the giants.